Hey guys, it's Biggs. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're doing a quick short video for you guys on five very, very important things that you need to ask and you need to think about if you're going to be buying a new heater. So one, two, three, four, five. That's five things. Let's check it out. All right, guys, I know what happens to all of us. Every once in a while, we need to get a new heater, right? Happens, they break, they cook our tank, things happen. You know, it's just the nature of the beast in the society that we live in in North America where everything is designed to be cheap, 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 and disposable, and we'll just buy a new one. I don't like that society, but it's a society that we've got. Everyone always wants to have the best quality, but it's just not necessarily the thing that happens, okay? So as we mentioned, there's five quick, five very important things. People usually just think, well, my heater broke, I'll just go buy another one. I need a 100 watt heater, I'm just gonna go buy another 100 watt heater. It's not really the case. These five things, if you guys question these five things, or if they question you these five things, you'll have the answers, you'll be better prepared to get the right heater for you guys, okay? Now, how to buy an aquarium heater properly. Why do you need a heater? Now, I know that sounds kind of silly, kind of derogatory, because I already went over that. I need a new heater because my heater doesn't work anymore. But why do you need a new heater? Not all heaters are the same. This is a good quality mid-range heater. You know, it's, 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 it's analog, I still gotta adjust it. It's not, you know, it's a far step from the ones that hangs on the back of the tank with a little dial. This one's fully submersible, but it uses regular glass. One step up from that is going to stuff like the, the Eheims or the Evo Jabers, and those are made out of a uh, poly, um, uh, almost like a Pyrex type material. It's a type of glass uh, that can handle its shatter resistance. So it can handle a little bit of banging around a little bit. And then you can go all the way up to the top, the cream of the crop, where they make a lot of these different resin poured plastic and titanium type ones that are virtually indestructible. Doesn't mean the insides aren't virtually indestructible. Just means the actual heater itself, the unit itself, can take a lot of abuse, okay? I'm not telling you guys, don't go and abuse your heaters, okay? Now, the reason I asked you is, why do you need a heater? You need a heater because one reason, right? The heater either stopped working, fine, but we need to know the size of your tank as well because that's a factor that's really, really important in calculating the amount right, correct size of heater that you guys are gonna need. I know there's that old rule of five watts per gallon and that's kind of a, a bare, the, the minimum sort of thing. However, if you have a nice sized tank and you put a heater in it and you get it just at that bare minimum, that unit's gonna be working all the time. It's gonna be working on and off, on and off, on and off, and you guys know what happens, doesn't matter what type of equipment you have, whatever you use in your life, be it a light switch on a wall, if you're using it all the time, those things wear out quicker. So if you buy something a little bit heavier wattage, it's not being used as often, it'll use power, it'll quickly heat up the water to the temperature it needed, and it'll shut itself off. That heater might last you a lot longer. The other, the other question is what types of fish? Now, why is that important? If you have a community tank with all sorts of, you know, sword tails and kerosens and stuff like that and cute quarry cats and everything's great and the plants, perfect, no problem. Most heaters will probably work fine for you if you need one. But if you have a large, aggressive cichlid aquarium, a big Oscar, maybe you have a big predatory catfish that likes to bang around the glass when those lights flick on real quick. You know, those type of things are considerations that you need to think about about when you're buying a heater because the ones that are made out of just the regular glass are probably going to get smashed against the wall of the tank or even worse against a rock and then they're going to crack and then they're going to break and water's going to get inside and now you've got an electrical issue now you've got a safety issue but these ones here or any of those type with a special type of shatter resistant glass those are going to give you guys a better edge for those type of fish so we're right up to three questions question number four i know it's going to sound kind of weird but are you gone for any length of extended time I know it doesn't sound, it sounds silly to most people, but with my livelihood, my livelihood, my, me bringing my message out to you guys all the time and my traveling with my speaking engagements, I'm away far more than I'm home. And so I need to really ensure that the life support equipment, and that's exactly what a heater is, it's a life support equipment for my aquarium fish, that it's gonna work and do its job. So I'm willing to spend a little bit more at that top threshold and make sure that I'm buying the absolute best I can that I can afford for my animals. And the last and one of the very most important questions is do you have children? And the reason I ask you have children, not do you just have children, but are your children or your kids involved in helping you with your maintenance of your aquarium? If they are in any way, shape, or form, that's an important factor, not only for the quality of heater and the things that we just talked about, 
But more importantly, another item is a thing that I would strongly, strongly recommend, and we'll probably do a video on it down the road separately, is a thing called a grounding probe. A grounding probe will basically be, I call it, a life insurance policy. It doesn't prevent a heater from malfunctioning, but it does save your life in the event that something is broken inside that tank and there's electricity in the water. And that will ground it right out and make it safe for you. Safety first, keep your family safe, keep yourself safe, enjoy the hobby. Now, when we're talking about heaters, not all heaters are created equal, and even the best of the best can fail. However, there are steps that us, us as aquarists can do to maybe prevent those aquariums from failing prematurely. You always, you know, there's, there's always exceptions to that rule, there's always going to be lemons, there's always going to be duds. But honestly, I've heard of these people have had absolute catastrophic uh, losses in their fish tanks, and honestly, some of those could have been avoided. I'm definitely not saying all of them, but some of them could have been avoided. Looking at the best quality heater that we can afford, very, very important, right? Fitting the heater to the type of fish as we talked about, the size of the tank and all those type of things, going a slightly higher wattage than needed. If you've got a big tank, like a four foot or plus bigger tank, instead of buying one heater, split the wattage and buy two heaters and put one on either end because otherwise you're going to get a gradient with a thermostat and you notice everything is contained inside this tube. So here the heating element is down here, all the electronics are in here in the thermostat and then you adjust it up at the top. And all of them are pretty much the same for these submersible style heaters. One step to take this up even a notch further is to take this whole thing out of the equation. Now you can buy these high-end titanium style heaters and ones that have a remote thermostat. The thermostat is far away from the heating element itself. It's going to keep the, make the heater last a lot longer because there's no heat being used anywhere near the electronics. But uh, you can also use those type of ones where you can actually plug your normal heater, like this one, directly into one of those type of thermostats, plug that thermostat and use that as the thermostatic controller for this heater. The other benefit is a lot of them that you can control several heaters or a wall of tanks on one of those type of thermostats. The only key is that make sure that you match that thermostat wattage to the amount of wattages that you're going to be using in your heaters. Really, really integral part. Now this type of a heater, you know, these are analog type heaters. They're pretty accurate. You measure them. They're all manually done and everything like that. Then you go to these ones here. They've got the dial up on the top and they're pretty accurate. And then you go to these type of Cadillac ones here. And these Cadillac ones, I call it the Cadillac. Yeah, you know, this is just one brand of them. But these poly ones, once you set it, this is fully digital. And this one here, once you set it and you follow the instructions, it'll actually lock it into a temperature and it'll keep it within that temperature range within half of a point of a degree. That's pretty seriously accurate for a heater. And uh, I've been running this particular heater in uh, both the 160s and one of the 175s, and I've been running them for four or five years now, and honestly, I've never had an issue. Could they fail? Could you get a bad one? Definitely you could with any brand whatsoever, but hopefully some of those little tips will maybe save you guys, save you some money, save you some money in the long run instead of buying one thing three times, buy one thing once, buy some quality, and hopefully it works out for you guys. Take care.